Hello and welcome to this discussion of the EU Green Deal. I'm going to look at the impact of the EU Green Deal on green tech and clean tech as part of the EU's decarbonisation agenda. In September this year, in the EU State of the Union Address, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen identified decarbonisation and digital transformation as twin pillars of EU strategy going forward. This is evidenced in this year's 750 billion euro budget for next generation EU recovery. Of that 750 billion euro, 37% is earmarked for implementation of the Green Deal and 20% is earmarked for digital transformation initiatives. So as an energy partner and a technology partner in NHC, I think that marriage of the green agenda with the tech agenda is a very interesting opportunity for businesses going forward. On the legal side, I think what we're going to see is huge impetus coming from the EU on marrying this green tech agenda with the EU decarbonisation initiative. Businesses across the board are going to be affected, but those in or interested in green tech should be ready and prepared now to leverage the benefits of the legislation and being early adopters ready to feed the demand for green tech. So by way of recap, the EU Green Deal was published by the European Commission in December 2019. This was Europe's green watershed or man on the moon moment. The EU Green Deal sets out an EU cross-industry roadmap for decarbonisation of Europe by 2050. A key aspect of the EU Green Deal was the acknowledgement that smart infrastructure and smart technology and digitalisation will be key enablers of the decarbonisation and sustainability agenda. This December mandate was again recognised in the State of the Union Address in September 2020 and in recent days on the 19th of October, the EU Commission published its 2021 work programme. In that work programme, we see a clear shift from the strategy and the policy of the EU Green Deal to delivery and implementation across policy and legislative measures. The 2021 work programme sets out a number of legislative measures in the green tech space that we'll turn to later. There are four strands of green tech or clean tech in the EU Green Deal. The first of these is not new. It's a continued emphasis that innovative technologies be used in the delivery of the sustainability agenda, for example, in the areas of smart grid, smart infrastructure and energy storage. We see this in, in Europe's 10 billion euro innovation fund. Phase one of that fund dedicated supports to the use of innovative technologies in the areas of renewables, energy intensive industries, carbon capture and storage, and the gold bullion when we crack it, energy storage. The second strand is really interesting. The European Commission has acknowledged a commitment to leverage the use of 5G, AI, the Internet of Things, and cloud and edge computing to accelerate and maximize the penetration of green policies and green initiatives going forward. The third strand is in the area of smart mobility. The Commission has indicated that it will look to an acceleration of measures in the areas of automated and connected mobility, smart mobility or mobility as a service, and smart traffic management by means of digitalization. All of this naturally is with a view to decreasing the pollution and the carbon output of the transport sector. We're already seeing early shoots of this in the take up of EV and EV charging stations, but there's a lot more to come in this area, certainly in the next 12 to 24 months. The fourth strand of clean tech or green tech in the EU Green Deal relates to the circular economy. And we saw this theme coming through very clearly in the Ireland's programme for government earlier this year. In the Circular Economy Action Plan published by the European Commission in March 2020 this year, it indicated that the built-in obsolescence of electrical or electronic goods would be addressed going forward by legislative measures. It's indicated that it will bring forward legal requirements with respect to the right to repair, the lifetime, the reusability and the recyclability of electrical, electronic and technical goods. 
So I think we're going to see a lot of measures in this area impacting both the green tech as an opportunity and as a burden of compliance over the next couple of years. In summary, what does all this mean for business and the law? And I think there are two key themes coming out of this. The first is that we're going to have a lot of legislative change over the next 12 to 24 months. I think that this is the next EU juggernaut of legislation where we're going to see the EU green wave converted into concrete legislative measures that national governments are going to need to implement. From the Commission's 2021 work programme, I think the early adopters or the early changes we're going to see are probably across three key areas. The first of these is in smart mobility, and we know that the Commission is looking at revisions to the EU cross transport network and the intelligent transport system network directives. The second is in the area of alternative fuels infrastructure. So this will impact, for example, those in the CNG, EV and EV charging industries by means of revision to the existing provisions on alternative fuels infrastructure. The third area is in relation to the circular economy. And I think we're going to see measures to implement, for example, the requirement to combat inbuilt obsolescence or the right to repair. We know, for example, that the Commission is looking at a revision to the eco sign directives or eco design directives. They may also look, for example, at an amendment to the 2019 sale of goods directive yet to be implemented in Ireland, but coming down the line. And I think what we're going to see is this inbuilt right to repair in terms of consumer goods. So across this legislative area, I think we're going to see a burden of compliance for many. This will affect, for example, manufacturers, the automotive industry, utilities, and certainly will impact those in the green tech industry as well. But aside from the burden of compliance, there's also an opportunity for those who are ready for the legislation and have the ability to leverage it. So I think we're going to see a huge demand for green tech over the coming years. And those that know the legislation and have the ability to leverage it will get an early adopter advantage in this area. I think the second theme or the second fallout from this will be in the area of green procurement or public procurement. The EU has estimated that about 14% of EU GDP is spent each year by government purchasing alone. And if they can point this engine of purchasing power towards green purchases or sustainable purchases, they feel that this will accelerate the decarbonisation agenda by 2050. So what this means is that I think we're going to see amendments to public procurement rules coming down the line. And certainly in the programme for government published earlier this year, the government indicated that it would be doing this as well and it's of its own volition. So what that means is that local authorities who are already grappling with getting used to the encouragement to use sustainability criteria as part of their award criteria in public procurement competitions, will need to get ready to upskill to use those criteria on a mandatory basis as part of their competitions. For those in the green, green tech or clean tech industries, getting to know this and getting to know how this award criteria will use and to leverage it to make sure that their tech has the best advantage to serve purchasing power will certainly be a good development over the next couple of years and one for those to get ready for. So in summary, I think we're going to see a lot of change and a lot of development in the area of green tech and clean tech coming down the line, certainly in the next 12 to 24 months. Thank you. <music>